Hello, my name is Keiji Yoshida. I'm a data engineer at Line Corporation. This year, we created a web-based data analysis platform named Oasis. All of our company's employees can analyze data of our Hadoop cluster as they like by writing Spark applications. Now, more than 100 employees use this platform every day. In this talk, I'm going to describe the details of this platform. My talk is composed of these three topics. First, I'm going to explain why we decided to create Oasis. Next, I'm going to describe the, its features and system architecture in detail. Lastly, I'll introduce its use cases at line. So let's move on to the first topic, why we decided to create Oasis. First of all, let me introduce my company, Line Corporation. Line is a communication platform provider based in Tokyo, Japan. And its main product, Line, is the number one messaging application in Asia. Line has about 164 million monthly active users across Japan, Thailand, Taiwan, and Indonesia, as well as having more outside of these main markets. We also provide various services related to Line, such as games, a sticker market, news, music, video streaming, a payment platform, an advertisement platform, and so on. We have a centralized Hadoop cluster to manage and analyze each service's data. There are Hive databases in the Hadoop cluster, and each database stores different services' data. For example, the line game database stores only line games data, and the sticker market database contains only sticker market data, and so on. This data is processed by ETL batch processing, analyzed by data scientists, or visualized on BI tools such as IBM Cognos or Tableau. At the end of last year, we started a new project to make our Hadoop cluster public within our company. That means each employee can access our Hadoop cluster's data directly and analyze their services' data as they like. This was necessary for all of our employees to speed up their data analysis process and decision making. Here are the requirements of our new data analysis platform. First, we have to control each employee's data access strictly. Each employee should only be able to access the data related to their service. They must not be able to access the other services' data. Secondly, we have to make our new data analysis platform stable. Data analysis processing and queries must continue to work normally, even if other users submit heavy queries or applications. The last requirement is about features. Each employee can extract data from our Hadoop cluster as they like by writing queries or applications. The result can be visualized and shared within the team or a department. These were the main requirements regarding our new data analysis platform. Here are the solutions that we came up with. For controlling each employee's data access strictly, we introduced Kerberos authentication to our Hadoop cluster, and we used Apache Ranger for authorization. Apache Ranger is a framework to manage data access control over a Hadoop cluster. We have Hive database for each line service, so we control who can access which Hive database via Apache Ranger. For stability, we decided to use Apache Spark as a query and application execution engine because Spark applications can run as a YARN application on our Hadoopian cluster. That means we can delegate resource control to our YARN resource manager. And we also decided to use Apache Zeppelin as a user interface for our new data analysis platform. Apache Zeppelin is a web-based data analysis tool. It supports Apache Spark and user impersonation. Extracted data can be visualized as multiple charts, and the result can be shared with other users. 
these features seem to meet our requirements, so we decided to use Apache Zeppelin as a user interface for our new data analysis platform. This is the system architecture of our first data analysis platform. Each end user accesses Apache Zeppelin and writes Spark application code on it. It submits a Spark application to our Hadoopian cluster while impersonating the end user's account. And the Spark application running on the cluster accesses HDFS data with the end user's account. Apache Ranger checks if the account can actually access the data or not. The application result is returned to Apache Zeppelin, which is visualized in the form of a chart, and the result is shared with the end user's team members. We operated this data analysis platform for several months, and we noticed that Apache Zeppelin did not match our requirements in some respects. The first issue was about security. Apache Zeppelin has a scheduling feature that can execute a Spark application on a prescribed date and time automatically. Users can set another user account to the user of this scheduled execution. So by exploiting this defect, users can access the data which they don't have access rights to on Apache Ranger. The second issue was about stability. Apache Zeppelin runs only on a single server, and version 0.7.3 does not support the Yarn cluster mode of Apache Spark. So all Spark driver programs and Apache Zeppelin process run on the same server. And it freezes if one of driver programs consumes too many server resources. That means we could not operate Apache Zeppelin stably due to this issue. Some Apache Zeppelin features did not match our requirements. For example, users can share a notebook with other users, but they have to set access control to each notebook. As the number of users and the number of notebooks increase, the end user's operation and notebook management costs increase. In addition, in my company's use case, it was needed to execute a previously created notebook while changing its parameters without saving it. However, we could not do such a thing on Apache Zeppelin. So due to these issues, we could not use Apache Zeppelin as a user interface for our new data analysis platform. So we created our own user interface named Oasis. We had developed it referencing Apache Zeppelin, but we also added some features to it to solve the Apache Zeppelin issues as I talked about earlier. In particular, users cannot submit an arbitrary Spark application by using other users' account. And Oasis can run on multiple servers so that it can handle an increase in the number of users and notebooks. We have been operating this Oasis for about uh, six months, and now more than 100 users use it every day. To wrap up the first topic, I'd like to explain the difference between Apache Zeppelin and Oasis. Apache Zeppelin is a good solution for a single team because it doesn't go with Apache Ranger. It runs only on a single server. Users have to set access control to each notebook. On the other hand, Oasis is for an enterprise. That means it can be used for multiple teams and departments. Because it works well with Apache Ranger, it runs on multiple servers, and notebook access control is set per team, not per notebook. We have to create our new data analysis platform for many teams and departments, and Apache Zeppelin did not match our requirements because it was aimed at a single team. So we created Oasis as a user interface for enterprise use. So far, I've explained our motivation for creating Oasis. Next, I'd like to describe its features and system architecture. 
This is the overview of Oasis's features. Users can extract data from our Hadoop cluster as they like by writing Spark applications. When a Spark application accesses HDFS data, its writer's user account is used by Apache Spark's user impersonation feature so that their data access is controlled by Apache Ranger. Extracted data can be visualized in the form of a table, a bar chart, or a line chart. Multiple visualization results can be bundled into a notebook. Notebooks can be shared within a team or a department. Oasis can run on multiple servers so that it can handle an increase in the number of users and notebooks. Now, I'd like to look at its main features in detail. This is a screenshot of the top page. Lines, services, teams, and departments are listed on this page. In Oasis, each service or team is called a space. A single space also represents a root directory of notebooks. Access right for each user is separately set in each space. There are two types of access rights, read-write and read-only. This slide shows an example. There are two spaces, space one and space two. In space one, there are two users. User A has read-write access and user B has read-only access. Similarly, in space two, User C has read-write access and user D has read-only access. In this situation, user A can read and create notebooks in space one, whereas user B can read notebooks but cannot create a notebook in that space. In addition, they cannot access notebooks in space two. So in Oasis, notebook access control is set per space instead of per notebook and that gets rid of end user's notebook permission management costs. This is a screenshot of notebook <coughs> creation page. Users can write Spark application code, submit it to a Hadoop cluster, and visualize the result in the form of a table, a bar chart, or a line chart. When a Spark application accesses HDFS data, the notebook's author's user account is used by Apache Spark's user impersonation feature. A notebook can contain multiple Spark application code and their visualization results. Notebooks can be shared within a space. That means they can be shared within a team or a department. A Spark application launches per notebook session. That means a Spark application starts when a user opens a notebook creation page and it stops when they save or close the notebook creation page. Spark, Spark SQL, PySpark, and Spark R are supported on Oasis and they share a single Spark application on a single notebook session. That means dataset can be shared within these different programming languages. This slide shows an example. There are three pieces of Spark application code on a notebook. The one on the left is written in Scala, and it generates data frames and their temporary views. The one in the middle is written in PySpark. It gets data from the temporary views and draws a scatter diagram by using matplotlib. The one on the right is written in Spark SQL. It also extracts data from one of the temporary views and visualizes the result in the form of a table. In this way, dataset can be shared within different programming languages by using Oasis's Spark application sharing feature. In addition, Oasis's Spark SQL interpreter takes advantage of Apache Spark's dataset caching feature. A query result can be cached in Spark executor's memories and other queries can access it. Here is an example. The query on the left extracts data from a table and caches the result in Spark executor's memories. 
the other two queries access the cache data and visualize the result in the form of a line chart and a bar chart, respectively. Like this, a query result can be cached and other queries can access it. This feature is useful when multiple queries access the same data set because it's much faster to access cache data than to extract data from an actual table. Oasis has a notebook scheduling feature that can execute a notebook on a prescribed date and time automatically. Contents of a notebook can be kept up to date by using this feature. This feature can also be used for implementing ETL processing. At Line, many users implement their own data pre-processing program by writing Spark or PySpark code. Such ETL processing can be implemented and scheduled. Parameter input forms can be put into a notebook while creating it. Parameters can be injected into each section of code of a notebook during its execution. This feature enables read-only users to execute a notebook while changing its parameters when they view it. Oasis has some features to manipulate Hive databases and tables. It has a feature to list Hive databases and tables and show each table schema. Users can check such information while writing queries or Spark applications. Users can create a Hive table by uploading a CSV or TSV file to Oasis. So they can easily analyze data files on their local machines by uploading their data files and creating Hive tables. This is the system architecture of Oasis. Front-end and API servers handle end-user's request. When a user submits Spark application code, one of the front-end and API servers receives it and transfers it to one of the Spark interpreter servers. After that, the Spark interpreter server submits a Spark application to the Hadoopian cluster. The Spark application running on the cluster accesses HDFS data, whose data access is controlled by Apache Ranger. The application result is saved temporarily on Redis and it's returned to the end user's web browser. When a user saves a notebook, its contents will be saved permanently on MySQL. If an ex execution schedule is set to a notebook, it will be registered and managed on Oasis Job Scheduler servers. Each Oasis component, such as front-end API, Job Scheduler, and Spark Interpreter, can run on multiple servers so that Oasis can handle an increase in the number of users and notebooks. This is the summary of our centralized Hadoop cluster. We have 500 data nodes and node managers. There are approximately 20 petabytes of data on our HDFS. We have more than 150 Hive databases and 1,500 Hive tables. That covers Oasis's features and system architecture. Moving on to the next part, let me present our use cases of Oasis. This is the statistics of Oasis in my company. We have more than 1,500 total users, 100 daily active users, and 300 monthly active users. There are more than 30 spaces. That means over 30 departments teams or services use Oasis in my company. We have around 1,100 notebooks. Among them, approximately 200 notebooks are executed automatically on their pre-arranged schedules. Our use cases of Oasis can be roughly classified into these five categories. I'll show you an example notebook for each use case. The first use case is a report. Users can use a notebook as a report 
that shows numbers or indices about a product or service in the form of a table or a chart. The next use case is an interactive dashboard. As I said earlier, parameters can be injected into a notebook. By using this feature, users can change parameters of a notebook, such as time span, and read all the contents of a notebook. This feature is useful for read-only users because they can explore data as they like by changing parameters of a notebook, which has already been created even if they don't have the skills to write a query or application. The third one is ETL processing. Users can implement ETL processing by writing Spark or PySpark code on a notebook and setting it execute automatically. At line, users create many ETL notebooks for pre-processing and cleansing data so that they can analyze data quickly and efficiently. The next use case is monitoring. Some of our users create a notebook that is executed automatically and periodically, such as hourly and daily, to validate a part of data on our Hadoop cluster. In this example, this notebook is executed hourly and visualizes the hourly number of certain log data in the form of a time series chart. And if there is a significant change in the data pattern, users can receive notification. So Oasis is used for data monitoring and a kind of outlier detector in my company. The last use case is ad hoc data analysis. Oasis supports PySpark and SparkR, as well as some data scientists analyzing data by using them to visualize the result with matplotlib in Python or ggplot2 in R. And they also give their data analysis code a test run on Oasis before they deploy it to the production environment. That's all I have to say about our use cases of Oasis. In closing my presentation, I'd like to go over the key points. We created Oasis, which is a data analysis platform for enterprise use, to solve the security and stability issues we had with Apache Zeppelin. Users can submit Spark applications to extract and process data from our Hadoop cluster as well as visualize the result on Oasis. By taking advantage of Apache Spark's user impersonation feature, each end user's account is used when they access HDFS data so that their data access is controlled by Apache Ranger. So Oasis is used to create reports with interactive dashboards, run ATL processing, monitor data, and perform ad hoc data analysis in my company. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was a great talk. If anyone has any questions, I'll be passing around Oops. <laughs> this mic. Hi. Um, <coughs> uh, one question is, uh, why did you go for OSS uh, uh, Hive SQL when you can have Ambari Hive or Hue or, you know, there are and also for PySpark and all, apart from Pouchy Zeppelin, you can have Jupyter as well. That's one question. <coughs> okay, so. And second is, uh, yes. uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> second is, uh, uh, you can restrict uh, access using Hive, uh, on Hive using Apache Ranger, but how are you restricting it on HDFS? I uh. mean, you can read files directly rather than using SQL as well, right? Okay, so for, uh, for the first question, uh, we checked another tool such as Hue or Jupyter or uh, Redash or something, but uh, they, uh, none of them match our requirements. Uh, Jupyter, uh, we have uh, a lot of employees who can on only write queries, 
but uh, on Jupyter, uh, Jupyter has no ability to visualize the query results, so we cannot uh, use Jupyter. And uh, Apache Hue uh, relies on Apache Ruby to submit Spark application, but uh, Apache Ruby doesn't some feature uh, that we uh, we need it. For example, Apache, on Apache Ruby, uh, we could not uh, submit multiple Spark queries concurrently on single Ruby session. And uh, we used a version 0.3.0 of Apache Ruby. And uh, how to say? Multiple programming languages, such as PySpark and Spark and Spark out cannot share a single Spark application. So we could not use Apache here. And for second question, <laughs> uh, Apache Ranger, on Apache Ranger, we can access control on HDFS. So in addition to Hive, uh, Hive Server 2, uh, we can control access, data access on Apache Ranger. Like this, uh, it has uh, access control feature for HDFS. So we rely on this feature. Uh, I got two questions. So the first is, uh, why have you decided to basically build another software instead of contributing back to the community, I don't know, maybe uh, raising a few pull requests and solve the uh, problems in Zeppelin. And the second question is, uh, are you planning to open source OSS? Okay, uh, for first question, uh, actually we contributed Apache Zeppelin so much, but uh, some features did not, uh, did not, uh, uh, has not been accepted for their policies or something. As, as I said earlier, uh, let me check. Uh, this feature is, uh, this uh, feature is critical for us to uh, not uh, make a user use any other user's account. So uh, we contributed by sending a pull request, uh, but uh, that was not being accepted. So uh, we had to create our own software. And for the second question, uh, it has not been open sourced yet, but uh, we'd like to make it public as much as, po as first as possible. For now, uh, I'm getting many, so many uh, enhancement requests from our employees. So uh, when uh, we finish, uh, that enhancement, uh, we are going to prepare for uh, open sourcing it. You said you're running cluster mode. Now I'm talking too loud. Um, so how do you, do you track jobs? Like if, if one of your web servers fails, do you track what was running from a notebook and can you repopulate? Uh, mm, uh, yes, uh, Oasis can be used for two ways. Uh, one way is interactive analy analysis. Uh, when, when the job fails, a user can, uh, user can notice uh, the failure because uh, the, the error message is uh, is shown on this result earlier, so user can uh, notice the failure. And for ETL processing, ETL processing, batch processing, uh, we have a feature to list uh, ETL scheduling his, uh, execution history. So by uh, users can a check a uh, bad job failure on this feature. All right, so I 
If you have any other questions, feel free to ask Katie in person. But thank you so much. We thank you very much. Time.